Chad AC Show News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO, broadcasting from the Coligan Water Studios, Better Water Pure and Simple. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about the Alamo with the CEO of the Alamo. Today, we turn our attention to the uh, Texas General Land Office and uh, what the plans are for the Alamo, how all this got started, and um, finding out some answers on uh, on a few different things. And joining us on the phones uh, right now, Brian Preston, Communications Director for the Texas General Land Office. Brian, good morning. How are you? Well, good morning, Chad. Thanks for having me on. How you doing? Doing right. Uh, doing well. Thanks for uh, joining us today. As as you know, this is a hot topic. Uh, this, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the the uh, I think it's been called reimagine the Alamo. And yesterday, I had the CEO of the Alamo on, uh, uh, Mr. McDonald, and, and he had said, "Well, you know, the we we really want the experience to be reimagined." So yeah. let's start off at the very beginning uh, of of this uh, of this I guess this push to redo some stuff at the Alamo. How did this idea get started, and and why did this idea get started? Sure, uh, great question. Thanks for giving me the chance to, to take it on. Uh, this, all, this whole thing starts really in 2014. Rock star Phil Collins, I'm sure you heard of him from Genesis and Sue Studio and, and all of that, um, he made a massive donation to the Alamo um, to the tune of several million dollars. That it, it's, it's a collection of some of the most amazing Alamo and Texas history artifacts in existence. That donation came with a stipulation, which is that we have to make substantial progress on a world-class museum to preserve, protect, and display that collection of artifacts uh, within a certain time frame. He made, the, he made the donation in 2014, and the target date for making that progress is 2024, which is the 300th anniversary of the Alamo having been built on its current site. So that's what started all of this, and when we came into the office, uh, the Bush administration, I guess, if you want to call it that, at the Texas General Land Office, we prioritized uh, getting going on this project so that we could meet that deadline. Okay, so th- there's been debate about what exactly the master plan is, what it's going to look like, and who is in control here. One, who is in control? Uh, you know, wh- wh- who is going to decide uh, what the plan is going to look like? And as of today, what do the master plans look like for the Alamo? Uh, Great question. Uh, We are in control of it at the Texas General Land Office. We're working with the city of San Antonio on the plans, and the plans call for basically five points that can be distilled down to three things. The first thing is preservation of the Alamo Church and Long Barrett, because those are the only two structures that survive from the 1836 battle, and they're about 300 years old or almost, and we need to preserve them to ensure that they stand for another 300, 3,000 years. So that's the first part of it. Second part of it is closing down the street and recapturing the battlefield, which is out in front of the Alamo under Alamo Plaza and Alamo Street, so that we can actually restore respect and reverence to the battlefield to uh, honor the defenders from 1836. And the final piece of it is building this museum for the Phil Collins collection and the Alamo collection, actually. Uh, the Alamo itself has a collection of artifacts that uh, we currently don't have room to display. So the museum will do that. So those three things are what we're about. I know there's been some uh, back and forth over whether or not we're, we're doing anything, quote, politically correct. We're absolutely not. Um, I can tell you that just straight up. I'm a fifth-generation Texan myself and a veteran. Commissioner Bush is also a veteran and a third-generation Texan. We have Texans in charge of this, and there's no way we're going politically correct. We're going to tell the story of 1836 better than it's ever been told before. Uh, the Cenotaph, that, that's become, I, I think, the main issue now uh, is is what the plans are for that. Uh, now, yesterday, the CEO uh, of the Alamo said, well, that's going to be up to San Antonio because San Antonio, the city of San Antonio, owns uh, that monument. Uh, yeah. How much influence does the textual, Texas General Land Office have on that? And what would you like or what would the land office like to see done with the Cenotaph? Well, the let me start at the end of this, which is that the Cenotaph will always stand. Um, there has been a national sort of hysteria slash conversation about other types of monuments from other wars. Uh, those, are, those, those conversations do not and should not affect the Cenotaph. The Cenotaph will always stand. There is a question of where. 
Currently, it stands in the battlefield, the 1836 footprint. It was put there from 1936 to 1940, finished and commissioned in 1940, and has been in the city's hands ever since. It could stand there. It could stand on a spot that's about a five-minute walk, five walk south, which is where the, the defenders' bodies were actually burned after the battle. Or it could, there's a new school of thought that it could stand kind of where the gazebo is now, which is just a little bit south of the 1836 footprint. Um, the General Land Office doesn't have a strong stand on that one way or the other. It is city property, and we're working with the city through this process. And I just want to reassure folks, we're at, the, we're at the early stage of this process, not any end state of this process. We have some established principles that we're pursuing that are all centered on 1836, uh, but no final plan has been made about the Cenotaph yet. What would be the purpose of moving it? Well, the purpose of moving it would be, there'd be two purposes to it. One would be to clear the battlefield itself, the 1836 footprint, as much as possible. We can't clear it completely because there are buildings that now stand on that footprint. But, right. but to the extent that we could clear it, that this would do that. The battlefield itself is quite small. It's only 1.89 acres. So anything that's in that battlefield obviously occupies a lot of space. The second reason would be to mark the location of those funeral pyres. If you go to San Antonio now and walk about five minutes south of the Alamo and then turn left on Commerce Street. There's a little park right there, and there are two markers that denote the funeral pyre locations, but they're very small, and it's very easy to just walk right past them. So that is, those would be the reasons you might move it. But like I said, no final decision has been made, and we are listening to the Alamo Defender descendants and the supporters of the Cenotaph. Uh, and we're visiting with uh, with uh, Brian Preston, communications director of the Texas General Land Office. Uh, it's it's a big issue. I know there's a lot of debate over this. One question that I, that uh, at least one listener had was, "Who's paying for all this? Where's you know?" Because I know some businesses are going to be relocated. Uh, yeah. Some buildings. I, I've heard maybe some buildings may have to be torn down. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, but you know, businesses that are there that are around the Alamo. Uh, the the plan is to relocate a lot of those businesses, correct? Yeah, that's right. Some of the businesses are in what are called the Crockett, Woolworth, and Palace buildings. Those are the three buildings that are directly across the plaza from the Alamo. And if you go down there and you see the Ripley's and the Tomb Rider, the, it's those buildings. Those buildings are historic in their own right. They are now owned by the state. We bought them in late 2015. And by the way, they're cash positive at this point, so the state's making money on them. Uh, but those businesses that are in there, they're good businesses. They provide jobs. They provide entertainment to folks that come to San Antonio. But I think everyone agrees they're not appropriate to be on the 1836 battlefield footprint. So the idea is that the state and San Antonio are working together with those businesses to relocate them to a place nearby so that they can still thrive and still provide jobs and still provide entertainment, but they, do, but they don't distract from the reverence and respect of the battlefield. Now, who's paying for this? Well, it's a combination right now. The Texas legislature has appropriated some money for us to get going on this project, and we thank them for that and for their leadership on that. We hope and desire that uh, the private sector will kick in, and we'll actually have a fundraising effort coming up in the near future that will raise the bulk of the money to fund all of this. Brian, as you know, this, I mean, this has made national news at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is going to happen with the Alamo and this, the, the idea of reimagining uh, the Alamo? And, and as I understand it, you're not going to change the name of the Alamo. None of that's going to change. Of course not. <laughs> uh, no. How, you know, with the legislature, obviously they've kicked in money. In the next legislative session, you've been around Texas politics for a while. Do you mm-hmm. think that this is going to be something that the legislature is going to say, okay, wait a minute, we at least want we want some knowledge of what all is going to happen? Has it reached that well, level yet, you think? Well, I think the legislature has been engaged the entire time. This is not a new uh, idea or a new issue for the legislature at all. In fact, you can go back into the 1990s and find legislation dealing with the management of the Alamo and the day-to-day operations of the Alamo. So this is nothing new. I mean, you can go back, you know, more than 20 years and find legislation dealing with the Alamo. Now, we we are constantly in communication with the legislature on what appropriations are needed for the Alamo's future and how we're spending them and all that. So uh, not only are we communicating with them, but we welcome that. I mean, it's just actually a good relationship that the land office has with the ledge. And, and, and how much public... I guess, response or, or public debate are y'all taking in? I mean, because it, one thing that it seems like to me is that unless you are in San Antonio or really, 
you know, had you had your eye on this. Not a lot of people knew until it blew up as an issue. And it's one of the things that I've kind of noticed is that people are thinking all of this is being done behind the scenes and that, if you know, that they don't have a chance to, to either see the plans or talk about the plans or, or reach out to you guys or have some influence over what the future is. Is there any plan at all to, to maybe take this more public, uh, you know, statewide and let people weigh in on this? Yeah, we will do some of that. And the fact is we've been public throughout this process. We've had 10 public meetings, mostly in the San Antonio area, because that's where the Alamo is. That's where it's physically located. So we've had public meetings with the city council and with the public as well. And we are listening. We're constantly listening. Uh, you know, For instance, there were a couple of proposals that were very early, just sort of embryonic proposals that the public didn't like. And those proposals are gone. Uh, the fact is the Alamo belongs to all of Texas. And no one understands that better than us Texans who are running uh, running this program here. So the fact that it belongs to all Texans and that it, the Alamo really is the beginning of the Texan identity, uh, yeah, of course we're going to listen to Texans on this project. Brian, where can people uh, find out more information about, about this project? SaveTheAlamo.com and right. also TheAlamo.org. All right. Easy enough to remember. Brian, appreciate your time today. Thank you, Chad. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. That's uh, Brian uh, Preston over at the uh, Texas General Land Office.